Sean Persinger here, aka Prester John. I'm the author of the 50 Greatest Guitar Books. And in this lesson, I'm going to do something very different because recently I did a bluegrass guitar lesson. And in that lesson, I held up an old Doc Watson record that had influenced the ideas I talked about. And I thought, man, that could be a whole series where I talk about records that I grew up with and the impact that they had on me. And I thought, what better place to start than with ACDC? Because I must have been around 11 years old when I saw this record in the record store and I thought, that is a weird album cover and I want to hear the music on it. And to say that this record is life-changing is an understatement. In addition to that one, I can remember being uh, a kid and saving up 20 bucks to buy this Australian import version of the first ACDC album, the first high voltage. And again, had a big impact on my playing, as did all of the ACDC records from the first one up until and including Back in Black. Those are really, really important records uh, on my playing. So today I thought I would talk about Angus's vibrato and his bending because it really did influence what I do. And even though I'm not known as a hard rock player, there's definitely a little bit of Angus in everything I play. So let's get to the lesson. I'm gonna talk about bends and vibrato. Here we go. The Jack live version. The Jack, the live version, what you have to do, I'm up here at the 17th fret, it's this opening the door vibrato. That, basically, I think of three different types of vibrato. Opening the door, rock the baby, and shake the can. All right, we're gonna do a lot of, uh, of open the door here. So you can see that motion. If you take it off, it's this motion coming from the wrist, not from the fingers. That one should take a lot of practice. Live wire. For the live wire, I'm up here at the 22nd fret, which is a little tricky because of the string tension because you're so high up the neck, but your arm is next to your body, so you've got a little more control as opposed to out here where there's less support to bend. So this is a very good one to work on up here at the 22nd fret. By the way, that's not the only song he bends at the 22nd fret, but it's a particularly great one. Night Prowler, first solo. He does two things on that Night Prowler solo. Is the first one, he does a quick bend. Then two quick bends and a slow bend. Second solo. Second one, he bends a half step, then slides off. And you shook me all night long, he does two vibratos. The one at the beginning where he bends, then there's a little bit of pause before he does the vibrato, and then there's vibrato at the end. I'll show you both of those. So that first one, vibrato after it's got the pitch, but the last one, right there, he's playing the fifth string, the fret, but he gets a sympathetic vibration on the fourth string. Really great, fat, thick sound. So there you go, some Angus bends and vibrato that I hope that you can incorporate into your playing as well. By the way, another big influence on me as a player was Angus 
always went from the guitar straight into the amp. By the way, that's a JCM 900. We'll do a little close up of that amp because I know uh, people like to see what I'm using, the gear that I'm using. But when I was in this progressive rock band in the 1990s, Boudin, I was adamant that Boudin was a hard rock instrumental group. And as a result, I went straight from a Telecaster straight into that Marshall JCM 900. Not that one exactly because my original one got stolen. So that was a big important part. It wasn't until years later that I started using effects and incorporating that into my playing. Also, by the way, this guitar is a 2019 SG, which I absolutely love and have been finally waiting to get the perfect candy apple red version, uh, Heritage Cherry, I think this one's called, but I like the candy apple red. Let's take a look at the amp. For those of you who are interested, this is my Marshall JCM 900. This is an amp that I used in the band Boudin, but this isn't the exact one because that was stolen out of my car after the last Boudin gig. I was uh, managed to replace it. So yeah, this is JCM 900 from the late 1980s, 50 watts, high gain, dual reverb. So it's got reverb on it and it's got two channels. I almost always used the uh, clean channel or channel A uh, for clean and just channel B for dirty. And that's all I used in the Boudin days. Because I was such an Angus Young fan, I wanted to be as pure as possible and just have guitar running into amp. So I'm using channel A here. That's the settings. Here uh, are the settings for presence, bass, middle, and treble. Treble all the way up. And the lead gain, I have both of those all the way up too. I also should point out that I'm using a 410 cabinet as opposed to a 412 cabinet. In the Boudian days, I had a 412. And then I found this 410 Again, not this one because it was stolen out of the car. I managed to find this one um, as well, later used. Uh, the 410, boy, it just sounds great. You really can control the feedback with the 410, and it's much smaller and fits into the car a lot easier. There you have it, my ACDC Angus Young lesson. I hope you've gotten something out of this because I had a blast making it, and it was fun to pay tribute to the guitar player who started me playing and keeps me playing. As always, make some comments, subscribe, and share, and as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.